I decided I want to go clamming. <laughs> okay, so I went to the uh, I went to the local sports store, and I'm like, I need some clamming stuff. I got a little bad a net bag. I um, you need a bucket. I have that at home. You have this thing called a clam gun. It should be called a clam tube. It's not really that difficult to understand. It's ba and you'll see during the videos, you'll see me using it. But it's basically a big tube that you push into the uh, sand and you pull it out and there's a clam in, uh, in there. And you look for a little divot in the sand, uh, a little dimple, and that's where the clam has whatever clams do. I, I don't know if they breathe or whatever. Whatever they're, Of course they breathe, but whatever they're doing there to cause that little dimple, I have no idea. But that's what you look for, the dimple in the sand. And I have that on video to show you. Uh, and then I bought a, um, a special shovel. It's no different than it just, it just, it's helpful to have a smaller shovel versus the big handle one. Cause usually down on your hands and knees, you know, moving rocks and all that good stuff. So I, uh, so the guy at the store goes, well, you're going clamming. That's cool. I've always wanted to go clamming. This is a dude that works at a sports or, you know, probably an expert hunter man or huntsman, blah, blah, blah. I've always wanted to go climb. I never know where to go. So that is the problem. Where do you go? So I've learned a lot, just like I've learned a lot for every animal that we're hunting. So you always start on your uh, Fish and Wildlife or DNR, whatever you call it in your state. And we have it sh uh, fishing and shell fishing. Now, being on, being on the coast, as I've mentioned several times, I feel like... Uh, you might be able to get big game in Montana, Wyoming, but you ain't getting seafood. So I'm pretty proud of that. So you click on that. Okay. And then I, and this, this was not easy. I spent some time on this site. You have to grind it out and spend time. Um, shell fit, shell fishing regulations, and then clam and mussel and oyster beaches. So when you click on uh, 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 shellfish safety interactive map, that's this one here, okay? And it's kind of sad because if you look at the whole where all the population is, that brown means like, you know, not good, pollution. And there's two types of pollution. There's just your normal crap that all the cities dump into the ocean. And there is bacteria that comes in, uh, which I found out very interesting. It comes in during the summer uh, more. And so clamming is not as popular in the summer because you have something called a red tide. A red tide is basically bacteria that's coming in and the clams just sit in the muck and the sand and just siphon stuff. So it's taken all the pollution in and it's taken all the bacteria in and you obviously don't want to eat those. So anyway, here I am sitting at, in Everett, and I want to go for it's green. So you go in there, okay, you go in there, and you look for green, okay? Well, when you zoom in, okay, so this is, so here I am, so this is all close. You know, I don't want to, to get over here, you have to take a ferry, okay? Um, this island is accessible uh, up north, okay? So I can come down this island. So look at all the red. Red is uh, either closed for season or closed because of, uh, of the red tide. Um, brown is just flat out pollution or pollution zones. Um, so I looked at this green, right? And uh, this island is accessible uh, by ferry. I can hop across the ferry here, but you can also come way down here. So that's quite a drive if you're not going to jump on the ferry. The ferry is a pain because of the ferry line and you have to pay, you know, for a car, it's at least 20 bucks. And so I could just drive around here, but then I wanted to find something that's green. So I found the first thing that popped up, this is a absolutely gorgeous. And I have some video of this gorgeous area right here, Deception Pass. So now this, uh, interesting, it changed color. So I found this place called Ala Spit. Okay. And this was green. Interesting. It's all, it's, it's, not green anymore because it's the season's over but this was green and i had no idea about climbing um, i watched one video so i went up to this place um and within 15 minutes i caught 40 clams that are the size of a baseball 
and they were uh, they were the butter clam. Okay, so this is the first time I have any experience. Now, that's technically not true. I grew up with my dad, uh, who was a biologist, and his part-time job in the summer, he was a professor at university, and his part-time job, which I was the fortunate, not fortunate, of helping out with was he would collect specimens to send to places to get um, uh, for you know dissection and and teaching purposes you know and so one of the one of the animals that we went and collected was freshwater clams okay but you don't go to red lobster and eat freshwater clams you go to red lobster and eat the clams from salt water i don't know they taste better i don't know there there's more of them i don't know but i wanted to go clamming when you go clamming, you're going clamming with clams uh, in salt water. So if I zoom out, the one thing unique about Washington is this beautiful thing called the Puget Sound. So the Puget Sound is part of the Pacific Ocean, but it's basically, it goes all the way through here. It's basically a lake because it's so sheltered. So you get all the benefit of being in an ocean with a, and also like a lake. So boating obviously is huge in this area because it's so calm water. Okay, anyway, so my goal was to go here. I had no idea uh, what I was doing. Um, I got my supplies. I was smart enough to get like a pad because when I got here, it was all rocky. So when it's rocky, you're not using the clam gun. You're using the shovel. You need to shovel away the rocks on the top and the clams look just like the rock. It's like camouflage, right? So the seagulls and the birds don't just pick them apart. But when I got here, there's a lot of people, and the clams are actually spitting out the water. Now, you could Google. I don't know why they do that. Um, there's a purpose. But they're just, uh, you can't really see them. But they're, you can see them just, if you look down the beach, they're like just spitting up this water all over the place. So th there was clams everywhere. 15 minutes, I caught my limit of 40 clams. Boom. I was a clam king. So uh, that was cool. I came back and you see the video. I cleaned them. I washed them. Uh, I cleaned them. I uh, boiled them. I made clam chowder. And it was like a 10 out of 10 experience. <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't got to my fishing little... Uh, maybe I should do that right now, but my little grades, uh, that was when it comes to clamming. Clamming is not as exciting as like shooting a deer or bear, okay? But I was very excited. It was a perfect day weather. Uh, I got my limit in 15 minutes. It was the best. I did all the research. It was awesome, okay? I came back. I made all the clam chowder. It tasted amazing. Uh, that was not a short process. I put all the clam chowder in glass mason jars and put them in the freezer. They all broke, and I didn't want to have the chance of thawing them and then having glass inside the clam chowder, so I threw everything away. I did have one bowl before I froze it, but I had to throw everything away, so I was bound and determined to go again. So I went back to the drawing board. Um, so what I did the first time, one thing I forgot is that what I would do is I would look for something that's green. So for instance, um, uh, let's see, like right here is green, okay? So if you zoom in, it says English Boom Park. So I went to a second tab and I went into, um, if I can't find it in five seconds, I will um, just talk about it. Oh, I guess it's down here, okay. So I go down here, I put English, uh, English Boom Park. Was it park or beach? Let's see. Park. Okay. So I put English Boom Park. I say find beaches. And then at the bottom, you need to go down. And it says, okay, no match. So the, the, the search is a little picky. So how about I go English Boom? Okay. There you go. So see, that shouldn't happen. So so Fish and Wildlife, Washington State, fix that. That shouldn't be happening. That's a terrible search engine. So you click on it, right? It gives you information. And sometimes it says, um, oh, they look at it. They give you fun facts. So um, 
this is a silty, muddy beach. East, eastern soft shell clams are the primary species, though not in large numbers. So that kind of tells you that's not a good place to go, right? Sometimes it'll say there's not much information for this beach. Sometimes it'll tell you, oh, there's clams everywhere, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so um, I kind of got lucky with a la um, spit. Alla, Alla, A L A, Alla. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, so I got lucky there because the uh, the time frame. One thing again, I'm not going to spend a long time on this, but there's some place here where it tells you the. Um, let's see, statewide. Uh, okay, rules, uh, season guide. Is this it? Yes, yes, this is it. So here are. Um, Here's when the season for oysters and uh, mussels and mussels, clams and oysters, and then uh, light blue is oysters only. So here's a bunch of beaches that you can click on. And then here's a bunch of places that are closed permanently. So you have to go in there and do, so clamming is all about the research, which is one of my specialties. That's what I like to do. I have time to do that. So uh, when I lost my whole <laughs> freaking clam chowder, uh, and I was so proud of myself. Um, I found some other beaches. So I started looking and it's better to be on the coast, right here on the coast because it's easier to get to driving wise. So here's Brown. I mean, they dump, dump out the sewer there. So I, I'm like, where are they? Where are they? I'm like, Oh, look at green way up here by Canada green. Okay. I'm like, where is this? Where is this? And so I got, um, Birch Bay. Oh, Birch Bay. I've been there. Birch Bay. So I got the, this one and then um, Drayden Harbor. Interesting. It's, is that, is it, what's yellow? Conditionally open. So um, so I we went to these two places and I have that film. We went with the Vaughts. Corey and Rachel. My, Corey, two dudes. He's the other dude. I uh, brought my wife. So we brought the ladies with us. It's always a good time with the ladies. So, of course... Um, I wanted to go here and Corey uh, 10 minutes uh, learning what I've done is now the expert and said, let's go to Birch Bay. Well, we, uh, first of all, we found just these little tiny clams and um, I'm like, Oh boy, I'm really glad we came to Birch Bay for over an hour. Now it's the, now it's past low tide. The tide's starting to come back in. I'm like, let's get out of here and go to where I wanted to go, Australian Harbor. And it's kind of funny when you get, to, <laughs> see how it's brown? Okay, so the brown is where, uh, these aren't big towns, these are not big towns, but somehow they're dumping, they're dumping pollution in here. Okay, there's this pollution. So there's just some, ran <laughs> there's some random stake in the ground and Corey was have, loving it. If you go an inch to the right, oh my gosh, those clams are poisonous, but an inch to the left, they're just fine, which obviously there must be like a, they figure a barrier. So some expert is figuring out when it's safe to start getting clams. So we were right here getting clams and there was a much better spot, but they still were tiny. Now, tiny clams are better to do what I call a clam bake, where you um, boil them and or you, you just kind of boil them on the in the shell and then put like whatever uh, so Kathleen did a little clam bake and that was awesome that was awesome um, my specialty which I like to do is um, clam chowder so I will literally take every clam out of the shell the butter clams have this nasty neck it looks like a wiener and it's got, the bigger they are, the, uh, the nastier it is. It's got this neck, it's chewy. The end is like all mis discolored because it, that's where it sits in the sand. And so I remove the neck and I rip open the gut and, and rinse it out because it's got nasty, it's got sand, it's got nasty, basically seafood must be their diet. And they just suck the, now that's how they get their nutrients. So I wash out the stomach, every single one of them. But when you're doing it on the half shell, you just you just cook them up, gut butter, and you just eat them right out of the shell, the whole thing. So when you have smaller clams, it doesn't have the big nasty stuff in uh, neck, or it doesn't have the um, as much nasty stuff in the gut. It's kind of like a small fish. You you can just eat a minnow and be fine, but a big fish, you gut it, right? It's the same thing. 
So anyways, uh, that's the video for clamming and it was a ton of fun. We came back and I made my clam chowder again. Um, I can't remember if I videotaped that second one, but I extensively videotaped the first time, um, except for the cracked mason jars. And that's what I'm telling you now. So um, I need to give it a grade. Uh, the first time it was, it was awesome. 10 out of 10. I even got complimented by an older man and without sounding too because this is going to be my, I decided we're going to have a family friendly and then a not so family friendly episode of two dudes and a gun. And um, the reason why I was proud of the element is because literally for some reason, it's a fact, it's not the seafood. And when you go down clamming and stuff, it's like 75% there more power to them. Uh, not just a fact. Uh, so anyway, uh, when I got that compliment the first time saying that I'm a, a good uh, boy, you have a lot. He, the quote was, and I won't, I won't say it in his accent out of respect, but he said, basically, uh, boy, you have a lot of clams. You're, no, he said, you're a good, uh, you're a good clam digger. You have a lot of clams. And he said it his own way. And it, I'm, uh, that was a very proud moment because I pretty much got lucky the first time. The second time we were we were working, the four of us were working. It was not easy to get our quota. We were working. You'll you'll see. Of course, Corey and I were going at it. He thought he was the king, and of course, I got more than he did. Anyway, um, so that's it for clamming. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is for that one month that Alice Spit is open back over by Deception Pass. I'm going to go there four times and get 40 clams each time and call it good and make my clam chowder. If Kathleen wants to go uh, to a beach to uh, collect small ones um, for a clam bake, I would do that with her. Um, <clears throat> uh, and, and also, I would like to find places where we can get oysters. Uh, we saw a couple oysters here, but there's actually beaches that are really prominent in oysters and that um that's my favorite oysters on the half shell you can't beat that so anyway that's it signing out big d peace out <laughs>